my favorite chaperone. In homeroom, when Mr. Halsworth handed out the permission slip for the spring fling, the off-school dance, I almost didn't take one. Why should I bother when I was sure the answer would be the same? Even though I'm in ninth grade now, it would still be the same. No, nant is what they'll say, and I don't want to hear this again, but I took the permission slip anyway. I don't know why I didn't just shake my head when this very popular girl, Marcia Inglis, was handing them out. And even after I took one, I don't know why I didn't throw it away. Maybe I just couldn't give up hope. It's like that in America. It's a place where things can change for people, and many people always seem to have hope. At least that's how it seemed to me. Maybe I was beginning to think this way too, although my hope was very small. I came to America through an international dating magazine. I don't mean that our whole family was in the magazine looking for dates. Yes, Medina Zemoka, my aunt. Aunt Medina came after Kazakhstan broke away from the Soviet Union and things got very hard. Everyone's pay was cut and the tonge, our money, was worth less and less. Then my grandmother died. That was the worst part. She was the head of our family and without, everything, without her, everything fell apart. That's when Aunt Medina started reading international dating magazines. The next thing we knew, she had a beautiful photo taken of herself wearing her best outfit, a black dress with a scoop neck and a red silk band around the neck. Aunt Medina is very pretty. Mama says she looks like an old American movie star we saw on TV named Natalie Wood, except Aunt Medina looks more cockish with her dark and beautiful Asian eyes. She sent the photo to one of these magazines, and in a very short time, a man from Seattle saw her picture. He started calling her, and they would talk on the phone for hours. I guess he had plenty of money for these calls, which Aunt Medina thought was a good sign. After about six months, she, he asked her to marry him. His name was Bob Campbell, and he had been in the Navy. He told Aunt Medina he had never had a chance to meet anyone because he traveled so much. Maybe that was true, but Mama was worried. Medina, something must be wrong with this man if he has to find a wife through a magazine. Mama was afraid for her, but Aunt Medina went to America anyway and married Mr. Bob Campbell. She phoned us a lot from America, and Mama admitted she sounded okay. Medina said Bob was a lot older and had less hair than in the picture he had sent her. He was also fatter than in the picture, but he was very nice. So it sounded so good, Mama stopped worrying about Aunt Medina. But then things got so bad in Kakistan that she worried all the time about us. Papa and Mama lost their teaching jobs because the government was running out of money. Mama had to go to the market and sell many of our things, clothes, dishes, even some furniture. When Aunt Medina asked us to come to America for the hundredth time, we were running out of things to sell, and my parents finally agreed. Aunt Medina sponsored us, but not long after we got here, Papa got a job driving a cab, and Mama worked cleaning other people's houses. It was hard for them not to have the respect they were used to from holding government teaching jobs, but they had high regard for the food they could now easily buy at the store. Six months after we got here, the Boeing Company moved to Chicago, and Mr. Bob Campbell got transferred there. When Aunt Medina left with them, it broke Mama's heart. Aunt Medina was the only person we knew from Kakistan, and it felt like our family just huddled together on a tiny island in the middle of a great American sea. I looked at the permission slip, wishing there were some, some special words I could say to get Mama and Papa to sign it. Around me, everyone in my homeroom was talking excitedly about the spring fling. Mama says she thinks the school is strange to have parties and events after school when students should be doing their homework. Ever since I've been at Beacon Junior High, the only slip I could ever signed was, the, was for the gymnastics team. Papa loves sports. I think he told Mama that giving permission for this activity was important for my education. I can't find words to say how grateful I was that he signed that slip. The gymnastics team is a thing in my life. I competed in all the events, vault, beam, floor exercise, and my favorite, the uneven bars. I love to swing up and higher and higher as I fly through the air. A wonderful thing happens, and suddenly I have no worries, no responsibilities. I'm free. But there's another reason why I love gymnastics. Shannon Lou is on the team. 
We became friends when she was a teaching assistant in my ESL class. We're the same age, but she says I'm like her little sister. Her grandparents came from China, and her parents speak perfect English. Everything about Shannon's family is very American. Her mother has a red coat with gold buttons from Nordstrom's, and her father cooks and sometimes even washes dishes. I couldn't believe this when I first saw it. No kakaman would well, go, no kakash man would do dish would do kitchen work. Shannon encouraged me to try out for the gymnastics team, and the team had meant even more to me this year since I got put in the mainstream and had to leave ESL. Since I left ESL, I often feel like I'm in the middle of a game. Players, the rules, or even the object of the game. In my next class, language arts, even though I knew I was foolish, I dreamed. I really liked language arts. Miss Co, our teacher, is also the gymnastics coach, and there's a guy in the class, Daniel Klein, who was my partner for a research project last semester. He encouraged me to talk and listen to what I had to say. He's also a very handsome guy. And I always look forward to this class so I can see him. I was trying to think of some idea to convince Mama and Papa to give, give permission. And also sneaking glances at Daniel Klein when Mr. Walsh, the vice, vice principal, came into our class. He whispered something to Mrs. Koo and she nodded. And then I was stunned because she nodded and pointed to me. Maya, you're wanted in the office, Mrs. Koo said. You can, go, you can go now with Mr. Walsh. My fingers tingled with fear. What's wrong? What have I done? Mr. Walsh only comes when comes for people when there's trouble. Like a robot, I gathered my books and followed Mr. Walsh. As he closed the classroom door behind us, my heart began to bang and I felt like I needed to go to the bathroom. In the long hallway, he told me Mrs. Johnson, the school counselor, wanted to speak with me. What is wrong? My voice came out as a whisper. I felt such terror I could barely speak. What's that? Mr. Walsh couldn't hear my whisper. What is wrong? I tried to speak more loudly. She didn't say. She just asked me to find you since I was heading down the hall anyway. I suddenly remembered Suntar Saivas, who was in my ESL class. Her family came to Cambodia, and on her first day at Beacon, she was in the wrong line in the lunchroom. Mr. Walsh was to, went to help her, and he tapped her on her shoulder to get her attention. When she felt the tap and saw him, she lifted her hands in the air as if she were being arrested and about to be shot. People who saw this in the lunchroom laughed, but it was no, no joke. Sunstar was full with terror. I knew I wouldn't be shot, but walking with Mr. Walsh to the office seemed like one of the longest walks of my life. I often fill my mind with nice things, such as imagining myself at the Olympics winning a gold medal for the USA, especially on days like today when we have a gymnastics meet after school. But now, my mind was filled with nothing. It was empty, like a dry riverbed where there is only cracked big parts and nothing lived. I walked into the main office where Mrs. Johnson was waiting for me. Come in, Maya, Mrs. Johnson smiled at Mrs. Walsh. Thanks, Tom. Like a person made from wood, a puppet, I followed Mrs. Johnson through the main office down the hallway to her office across from the principal's. She showed me in and closed the door behind us. Sit down, dear. I sat in a chair across from her desk and clutched my books to my chest. I've never been in her office before. She had many nice green plants in the front window and a small fish tank in one corner. I stared at the brightly colored fish swimming back and forth, back and forth. Then Miss Johnson spoke. I received a call from Mr. Shannon, the principal at Evergreen Elementary, and your brother's been suspended for fighting. Nurzen? Yes, Nurzen Al Alazomba. She read his name from a pink message slip. They haven't been able to locate your mother, so they called over here to see if you could help. Is Nurzan all right? Yes, but I believe the other boy wasn't seriously hurt. Who did Nurzan fight? It was a foolish question. I was sure of the answer. Mrs. Jones hesitated, so I just said, Osi Nizomno, and she nodded. What must I do, I asked. The school policy on suspension requires that the parent or guardian must have a conference of the school within 24 hours of the suspension. Can you help us locate your mother or father? Yes, I can do that. Do your parents speak English, Maya? Just a little. Then perhaps you could attend the meeting and translate for them. 
Yes, I must always do this for my parents. At the store, at the doctor, things like that. Here's the phone. I'll step out to give you some privacy. Mrs. Johnson left the office, quietly closing the, do the, closing the door behind her. I looked at the nameplate on her desk. Catherine Johnson, it said. Outside her window, the sky was gray, and it started to rain. I stared at the phone, wishing I didn't have to be the messenger with this bad news. Then I called the Northwest Cab, cab Company and asked them to contact my father. I beak Alzova, cab 191. I'm his daughter, and there's a family problem I must speak to him about. I stayed on the line while the dispatcher radioed Papa. I looked at the clock and felt my heart grow heavy. In a minute, the bell would ring. School would be out, and the meet would begin. Maya? Papa's voice was alarmed. What is wrong? Nuzan's been in a fight with another boy. Then I explained in Russian what had happened, and Papa said he had to drop his passenger at the Four Seasons Hotel downtown, and then he'd come straight to Nurzan's school. He'd be there about 3.30. Mrs. Johnson came back into the office as I hung up the phone. Did you get your mother? I didn't have the mom number where she works today, but I got my father. He will come to school. Good. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. I will leave now forever. I, I will leave now for Evergreen. Will you tell Miss Koo I have a family problem and I cannot attend the gymnastics meet? Of course. And I'll call Mr. Shannon at Evergreen now and let him know that you and your father will be there. I went to, I went to my locker, got my coat, and walked quickly down the hall to the south door that opens onto the play field that joins our school with Evergreen. Poor Nurzan, getting in such big trouble. I couldn't fight him for I couldn't fault him for fighting with Ozi Nishizua. Such a mean boy. He's been teasing Nurzan without mercy for speaking well and mispronouncing for not speaking well and mispronouncing things. I hope Nurzan had given him a hard punch. But why did he have to make this fight today? I felt angry that I had to miss the meet because of Nurzan. But Miss Miss Ku still want me to be on the team? Would you think I wasn't reliable? But I neared but as I neared Nurzan's school, my old school I only worried about Papa. Even though he didn't shout at me on the phone, that didn't mean he wasn't angry. He had a person in his cab and the dispatcher might have been hearing us. Probably the dispatcher didn't know Russian, but Papa wouldn't want to show his anger in the cab anyway. But Papa could be very, very angry. Not just with Nurzan, but with me too. He and Mama thinks it's my duty to watch for out for Nurzan and keep him out of trouble. As I walked up to the front door, Mr. Z Z Zbornik, the custodian, waved at me. He was picking up papers and litter around the bushes next to the front walk. It was still raining slightly, and Mr. Z Z Zbornik, wet gray hair, was pasted against his forehead. Hi, Maya. Hello, Mr. Z Z Zbornik. Hear about your brother, I suppose. How did you know? I was fixing the drain pipe when he happened. He pointed to the corner of the building by the edge of the playfield, the kid, Oshi Nizono, was teasing her in something fierce, telling him he could never be a real American, making fun of the way he talked. He bent down and picked up a candy wrapper, reminding me how this bully used to treat me when my family came after the revolution. Oh, I, I think Mr. Nizor, Z, Zabornik, well, I didn't know what revolution this was. The Hungarian Revolution in 1956. He looked out over the playfield and folded his arms across his chest. Yes, some things never change. Nurzen's going to be suspended. Sorry to hear that. Of course, the school can't allow fights, and this was no scuffle, but I can see how your brother lost his temper. Then he went back to picking up, picking up the litter. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Nizamorek. I went to the front office where Miss Illo, the head secretary, spoke to me in a very kind way. Maya, Mr. Shanneman is waiting for you in his office. You can go right in. Mr. Shanneman was behind his big desk, and Zerhan was sitting on a chair in the corner. He looked like a rabbit caught in a trap. He had scrapes on his hands and on his cheeks, and his eyes were puffed up. But I couldn't tell if that was from crying or being hit. I understand that your father will be coming. Is this right, Maya? I nodded. Just take a seat by your brother. Mrs. Illo will bring your father in when he gets here. Then Mr. Shanneman read some papers on his desk, and I sat down next to Zuran and spoke quietly to him in Russian. Nevago Nuzan Yavasni Vinu. It's okay, Nuzan. I don't blame you, is what I said. Nuzan's eyes were wet with tears as he nodded to me. 
I stared at the principal's window across the street, the bare branches of the tree, 